so in because that rowdy trailer belongs to Star Wars Outlaws. And joining me now to talk through this very epic space adventure, please welcome creative director Julian Garrity. How are you doing? Hello. Excited. Uh, yeah, I bet. I mean, that's a hell of a trailer to cut. I mean, do you know, do you know what? That's the first time I've seen it. No. And it's. What do you think? It's awesome. Oh, it's, uh, yeah. The music gets me every time. I love the characters. Yeah. The locations look great. So, from a point of view of somebody who's just discovering it. <laughs> I'm very happy. Good. I mean, can you set the scene for us a little bit? Because although that did give us a little look at what we're going to be getting up to, yeah. what is Star Wars Outlaws exactly? What is Star Wars Outlaws? Mm. So, it's the first ever open world Star Wars RPG game that features scoundrels, yes. outlaws, my favorite archetype of Star Wars. So, it's, it's really giving you the keys to be uh, part of the underworld, part of the galaxy of Star Wars on your terms. I love the sound of it because you're right. This is a brand new experience for a lot of players. We've had, we've had tales about force wielders before, but the scoundrel is so important to Star Wars in general. And now to finally play as one is incredible. And we've seen a bit of Toshara, we've seen a bit of Tatooine. You've picked some great locations for the game, but now we're going to get a little look at the planet Akiva, right? Yes, absolutely. So this is the first time we really dive into Akiva. And Akiva was only ever featured in a series of books called Aftermath. Mm -hmm. um, so we're the first to take those words and to transform them into something lush, beautiful, complex. Yeah. And complex not just in scenery, but also in the politics, the dynamics that are happening. Busy? You'll be able to see while Kay uh, runs around the streets of, uh, of uh, Mira, the main city. It's very beautiful. It's gorgeous, Yeah. but it's also corrupt. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that there's stormtroopers, there's an empire presence, and the pikes and the huts are also fighting it out. So empires and syndicate presence within the city, mm. within the planet as a whole. Well, we'll get onto the syndicates in just a sec, but as I've heard from you before, speaking about the game, one thing your team's really proud of in particular with Star Wars Outlaws is those hubs of where Kay can get her intel, and that all starts with cantinas. Now, the cantinas that we have on Akiva, very different to the ones we have on Tatooine. Tell me a bit about how you go in designing these to make sure they feel like Star Wars cantinas, but also reflective of the planet or moon that they're on. Absolutely. So the cantina is this flashpoint of everything that makes Star Wars special. And the approach, the design philosophy that uh, we worked with, with uh, Lucasfilm Games, really allowed us to understand the simplicity, relatability, and yet difference that all of these locations can, can take. So for example, in the real world, you have jazz bars, you have Korean yep. barbecues, you have all of these different types of location. So each one of these had to have a different type of vibe. Here in uh, Akiva, it's a tropical tiki bar. <laughs> so that's the vibe that we were going for there. Sounds great. And it's obviously a great place to meet up with these crime syndicates and get some jobs. How do they make an impact on the game? So, of course, this is a game about the underworld of Star Wars. And there are four main syndicates. There's maybe more, but there are four main syndicates that you'll be dealing with. The Pikes, the Huts, uh, the Ashiga clan that we created with Lucasfilm Games and the Crimson Dawn. Mm. And you, as an outlaw, are going to be able to work on your reputation with each one of those. Doing jobs for some, betraying others, and building your profile accordingly. So very, very involved in your personal story throughout this adventure. That's incredible. So they will form a general structure that Kay can live out this story in, but how much agency do players have to maybe go off the beaten path, maybe take Kay down some slightly darker routes or playing the good guy a bit? It 100% up to you. So for example, here, this is the first time we ever show this quest. And it's a quest where you're, you've landed in a Kiva, your main focus is to go pick up a droid smith, a uh. droid smith that you need to pull off this heist that we've been talking about. 157 million credits, that's not, a lot of not credits. Bad, yeah. And to do that, you're going to have to upgrade your equipment, which uh, we're doing there. We're yeah. making sure that your loadout is the right one. You jump on your speeder, and you'll be able to be distracted by curiosity on the way. So you're speeding off, you're on the way. It's quite a journey. Hmm. And on that journey, you're going to be able to do jumps, tricks, 
Nice. The bike is uh, <laughs> based on a motocross, uh, so it, it feels visceral as well. Right. And you'll be able to come across different things. Like here, we have a um, uh, an Imperial shuttle landing. Do you go and mingle with those people? Do you do you mess around with the Empire at this point, or do you save it for a little bit later on? Mm. Because guess what? That droid smith, he's going to be located in an Imperial compound. Oh, just our luck. Just, just our, our luck. luck. Well, how well equipped can the player be to tackle? <laughs> that's not a compound. That's a fortress. I mean, what does Kay bring to the table to be able to deal with these kind of scenarios? Well, she, she's got to have the equipment to be able to do that. And that starts off with things like your binoculars to be able huh? to scope the different opportunities. There's not just one way in. There are several ways in. The way, the surest way to, uh, to meet him in a very certain end <laughs> is to go in guns blazing. Because this is the empire we're talking yeah. about. So it's a massive force in front of you. We're going to go stealth. Okay. And binoculars, one thing. Blaster, another. Nix, incredibly important. Let's just have a taste of how Kay uses Nix. Okay. She's going to be sending me across and attacking, clawing <laughs> the hell out of that stormtrooper. I feel bad for the guy. That's you shouldn't. You shouldn't. He's there. He he's built for this. <laughs> okay. True. You take out the second uh, stormtrooper, and now you have to hack through that laser barrier to be able to get into the gooey good stuff in yeah. the middle of that fortress. So there's quite a few different ways of engaging in uh, in a mission like this. Absolutely. Um, what would happen if we did go in all blasters blazing? Would it? Be the, a big problem for us on this particular mission. This is an Empire compound, so that's going to be a real problem. Okay. I'll take your advice. On One that. of the conditions is that you don't set off the alarm, because if oh. the alarm sets off, you're going to shut down that compound. Fair enough. You may revisit the compound later on to be able to, to steal more stuff and to, to really find all of the treasures. And there, you can do it the way you want. But ATSTs guarding the door, You've got a blaster in Nyx. Do you really want to put yourself in that sort of situation? Uh, I could take my chances, honestly. <laughs> um, earlier on, though, we did see with Kay's using her blaster now, but before that, she was working on it a bit on her workbench yes. um, in, inside the Trailblazer. That, what, what is that all about? Is that like that's, upgrading? Or? Yeah, that's absolutely upgrading your weapon. Okay. Because we want this to be about a, a resourceful underdog. And a resourceful underdog, they have one main tool that you can upgrade. You can have a charge blast, which is like a rocket launcher. What? A, uh, plasma, which is the regular blaster right. with speed mode to it. So it feels like an automatic weapon. And you have uh, one uh, function, which is the, the shock function, mm. which we'll see a little bit later on. Nice. I love the way that she even moves around. Like you mentioned before, Scoundrel Archetype is one of your favorites. Yeah. but. The movements of Kay, the, like, the mannerisms, the swagger, really communicates that so well. It, it's something that we worked on Division, Division 2. Right. Those are trained military uh, agents, yeah. civilian agents, but with military training. Here, we wanted a resourceful underdog. So you have to have that different movement. But all of those mannerisms and that sort of swagger that you see yeah. there, that's Umberly, who brought that to the character, and she'll be able to tell you all about it. Okay, great. I'll make sure to. Uh, one thing that I want to point out as well, we did just talk about the blaster a little bit. We're getting to see some of the action over there. <laughs> nice shot, by the way. Um, the sound of it, too. I mean, in Star Wars, there are so many sounds that are iconic. Players, you know, when we listen to them, it makes our, the hair in our If you close your eyes and think oh. TIE Fighter. Yeah, TIE Fighter. I'm thinking, like, the, the, the seismic charge. Yep. Oh, man, yeah. But Kay's blaster also has a really satisfying punch to it. So tell me about the process for making sure that you're designing a weapon sound-wise, the feel of it, the look of it, making sure it's authentically Star Wars, but also brand new, something that you've created. We have to get inspiration from the past, get inspiration from the original trilogy, because this, uh, this adventure happens in between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Right. So we, we had access to all of those things. And then the pleasure is looking at that, working with that, and coming up with something that sounds new and that become its own sound. And that extends from the sound design to, you know, the music of the piece, which I think is remarkable. Yeah, you heard it gorgeous. in the trailer. 
it's it's fantastic. Anytime I hear the horns, honestly, I'm goosebumps. <laughs> it's crazy. So we finally find our droid smith here, then I guess. Yeah, who's not particularly happy to see you. Uh, so I'm not going to spoil the the story, but the droid smith Gadik has a past with you. Okay. And he's he's ended up working with the Empire, so you know he's made some really bad decisions. Oh dear, yeah. It's not great. I mean, he's already got a, a protocol droid firing a gun at us. I never thought I'd see that. But. <laughs> Ah, oh, now that's that's caught his interest. That's caught his yeah, interest. Yeah, interesting. There's a real challenge. There's yeah. a real opportunity. It's not motivated by the credits, but tinkering mm. around with some uh, some new tech. I like That's it. what catches his uh, his eye. I could get on with this guy. <laughs> but the problem is, once we extract Gadik, we have to get out as well, right? And that's where the blaster comes into its full All right. use. Nice. So. Uh, this is going to be part of one of those main quests. Mm -hmm. It's a linear quest, and there's a whole path where you explode into uh, the the combats and you yes. use all of the tools at your disposal. Right. Before, we, we edited a little segment, which was a puzzle room. Right, we didn't yeah. want to spoil the puzzle. We didn't want to spoil the traversal. We wanted to focus on the real action of this yeah. piece. Great, and now we're getting some serious combat because there was no chance to sneak there. Everybody's just ripped That's over and saw us immediately. Let's just escape. But this this is where Kay sort of comes into her own because scoundrels they love to improvise. They you know they're good under pressure, and so I guess you want you encouraging players to make sure they look around them, identify bits that are useful, Absolutely. send nicks out. You know, play all, around with it a bit. All of those tools. You've got an adrenaline shot. Oh, uh, so if you recognize that it allows you to slow time pick your targets and it's an automatic kill nice ah that's a bit more of a problem though this guy's got a shield and one of your modules will be able to disable that shield opening Great. them up for the uh the deadly shot <laughs> absolutely stunning and that's it you grapple hook out and, and escape the base you make it seem so easy. I met when I'm gonna. I'm gonna try it, and it's not gonna be that. I easy. wish I was playing this. With <laughs> There's a whole team, uh, and they've done an amazing job at capturing this. One. Yeah, I mean, right at the end there, we also got a little sizzle, a little taster of the rest of what's to come in the game. And one thing in particular I spotted there was some sabak happening yep. as well. Yep, sabak. So you got to tell me about that because I love it. Sabak is a big part of the scoundrel lifestyle. Yeah. So we wanted to create our own rules, which gave us this, this depth uh, of play and being able to collect special cards mm. that change the rules of the game while you go along. So there'll be tournaments, there'll be high stakes games, there'll be nice. a lot of credits to win as well. Great, well, I'll have to get practicing on that, to be, to definitely. But so I just want to say thank you so much for joining us. This has been incredibly insightful. Cannot wait to play the game, and it's not too long until launch. So no, buckle next up. week. Buckle next up. Week. Yeah, well, thanks for joining us, Julian. Next up, though, to celebrate the launch of Star Wars Outlaws, we decided to test some lucky fans on their Star Wars knowledge. Let's see how they got on.